Hello. Welcome. Welcome. So we've been building this computer and um, it can execute a program. And we've got a bit of a debugging output down here that'll show you what the program is that it that it's executing. So right now it's going to add these two numbers together and store it in register zero. So register zero should be 34 more than this. And you can see that happens. Um, in the previous episode, we added the ability to program the computer in a more user friendly way. Um, the issue then that we currently have is we have the ability to uh, do a jump but we don't actually have that implemented anywhere. So a jump is essentially just a, a way of doing a loop within a program. And currently we do loop in that our memory has only got four um, cells in it. So we just have to click this button four times and it'll roll back to the beginning. So we do kind of have a way of looping, but it would be nice to be able to start the program with a bit of an in initialization routine so we can store specific values in the registers and then have it loop over the calculation at the end of the program. So to that end, um, let's see what we need to do next. Well, one of the first things that we need to do in order to support a jump is we need to be able to load a value into the program counter. Um, so that's a little tricky in this because there's no input to allow us to load a new value into the program counter at all. So let's, let's add that. Um, so if we look through our options for program counters, which are in the memory here, we have this counter, which is what we're currently using. And then we have this other one called a counter with preset. And it says a counter whose value can be set. Well, that sounds exactly like what we want. Um, it's got a whole bunch more inputs though. Uh, well, we know what to do with the enable input and we know what to do with the clear input. Uh, we don't want to clear and we always want it enabled. Okay. Um, well, what do these other inputs do? Well, we, we know what the clock does, um, but what does direction do? Uh, it says, it specifies the counting direction. Well, we always want it to count up and it says zero means upwards. So that's easy enough. Um, what does in do? Uh, this data word is stored in the counter when LD is set. Oh, okay. So that, that sounds like uh, what we would want to do when we, when we jump. And what's the LD do? Uh, if set, or in other words, if it's turned on, uh, the value at the input in is stored in the counter. Um, what's important to note is it's, it's stored in the counter when the clock next goes high, which is exactly what we want because we don't want to actually perform the jump until the clock pulse, right? So this sounds exactly like what we need. Um, let's remove this one and let's install this one in its place. Uh, um, let's move this down. Okay. What do we do next? Well, if we try and turn this on, it's going to say there's problems. Um, one of those problems is we don't have the number of bits set. Uh, so this is a PC. And actually, I'm going to say that this is a program counter. OK. Um, so the input is not working. Um, we don't have it set to anything. Uh, well, for now, what we could do is just set these inputs to 0. Um, OK, now it's working. And we can see our program is doing the same thing as it has been the last few episodes. So we haven't broken anything. Um, but what's the next step? Well, what we're doing in the in our assembler here is we encode the jump instruction. If we run this, if we set this to high, what we do is we output a seven in this position in our instruction, um, which is actually the 
these three bits here. So um, if that's what the assembler does, let's implement that in our decoder. So um, currently we just have these here. So let's let's change this to be the same as the other one, uh, the one in our assembler. What to do with these three bits? Um, well, currently we just need to know whether or not it's a jump and whether or not it's an add. Um, well, we could just have a demultiplier, or a, I guess a decoder actually, a decoder that outputs whether this is an add or a jump. So this will take three bits and I kind of don't have a lot of room for it currently. Let's resize things here. Um, let's put the selector on the top. Okay, and this should work. Um, well, what we could do, and this will probably do for now, is we could output whether this is an add or whether this is a jump. Okay, uh, that seems to work. Um, if we give it seven, uh, oh, x seven, and if we have the correct number of zeros, uh, well, I don't know what the correct number of zeros is. Uh, let's just guess that. Um, that is not correct. So there's a three here, so I think we're off by a bit. There. So now our jump instruction is here. Okay, um, that seems logical. Let's try and do something with these outputs. So we need a little bit of room here. Not sure how much room. Let's just give us plenty. Um, well, I know I'm going to want to know if this is an add or a jump at some point. So let's add some tunnels here. Uh, let's move these around. Okay. Um, one of the things that we want to do is uh, when we're jumping, we want to write the program counter, right? So, um, well, when we're jumping, we probably want to write A here into the program counter, right? Um, Let's make a little bit of room here and try and do that. What's the best way to get that down there? Probably like that, hey? And let's delete this. Um, but we're going to have a problem right away. Uh, if we do this, it's going to say that 16 bits are found. Um, oh, and I put it in the wrong input. There we go. Um, but this is the wrong number of bits. So let's try and fix that. Um, inputs, 16 bits. Output is, uh, well, currently it's two bits. So let's, let's just do that. All right, and then we need to know if we're jumping. So um, why don't we do this? That is not ideal. Okay, this will work for now. Um, all right, tunnel is not connected. Yes, but it is. There you go. Okay, um, all right. So this should continue to work the way that it always has. Um, let's add a jump instruction though. And what would be really helpful is to know what the value of the program counter is. So let's add an output to display that PC. Okay, so let's go to instruction three and let's add a jump. Uh, so we have to go into programming mode um, and we want to jump to instruction uh, one, let's say. So let's program a jump there. Okay. Um, so if we look in here, we now have a jump in an instruction and it should jump to one 
and it should skip over zero if it's working properly. So let's go out of programming mode. Um, and you can see now on this instruction, the jump is active. And if we clock, what I would hope would happen is this will go to the number one instead, which it does. Excellent. So now we're looping one, two, three, one, two, three. We skip over instruction zero. So we could use instruction zero to initialize our program if we wanted to. Hmm. We have an issue though. Our R0 is doing things we don't expect. What's going on here? Okay, so we've got R0 is equal to 1 plus 15. Okay, that's not great. So it'll set that to 16, and then we jump back to 1. Um, and that's because we're not doing anything with this add line here. Um, it would be nice to do something with that add line. Uh, what should we do? Well, hmm. Well, currently our register file always writes every clock cycle, no matter what. So probably the easiest thing to do is just simply to write whatever value is currently in one of the registers back into that register. Um, so let's do that. Let's open our execution circuit here. Um, so we'd want to take a value as an input and write that same value back out. How do we do that? Well, first of all, we need to have an input that tells us whether we want to do that or not. Um, if this input is high, then we want to add. If it's low, then we don't want to add. Well, we want the result to equal probably the input. Which input? B, I guess, hey? Um, B comes from the register, yeah. So we want to write B back to result. Well, we could just have a multiplexer on the output. And if, so if add is one, so we probably want to move this up. Uh, yeah. So if it's one, then we do that. Uh, okay, so we have and three. So we're adding two and three if add, or no, we're just we're just outputting three if add is zero. If add is one, then we add them together. That seems reasonable. All right. So we have our B there, and we have this add input. That's, uh, we need a little bit of room here. There we go. Let's see. Let's go to our jump instruction and see if we are executing it properly. Okay, so R0 should be completely unchanged. And it is. Excellent. Okay, so we have a jump instruction. It doesn't affect any registers anymore. They are no longer, well, they're being written, but the same value that's in the register is being written to the register. Um, which isn't quite right, uh, but for the jump instruction, hopefully RS and RD will be zero, so they will point to the same register, and we just need to be careful of that when we're entering in our instructions. Okay, um, I'd like to store a bit of a better program into here. Uh, one of the issues, though, is we only have four locations to store program, um, I'd like a few more locations just to be able to store a larger program. So the easiest way to do that is just to increase the number of address bits. Let's say, let's go with four address bits. That gives us uh, 16 locations in our program. So if we increase that, then we need to increase our program counter to be four bits. Uh, that'll allow us to count up to 16. 
uh, our output needs to be four bits and this needs to be four bits as well. Um, I think that should work. Yes, it does. Excellent. Okay, so now we can enter a bit of a larger program. So um, let's go into programming mode. Let's set our value to 100. Um, our destination will be register zero and our source will be register zero as well. So let's do that. And that should set R0 to zero or to 100. Yes, it does. Excellent. Okay. And then um, what we want to do is um, destination is going to be R1. Uh, source is going to be zero. Okay. And then we're going to add, uh, let's add 200. Okay. And then excellent. And then let's add 99. And our destination is going to be R2. And our source is R1. And then 34. Our source is our destination is R3, and our source is R2. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, okay, and then now we want to do a jump. So we want to jump back to line one. And our source and destination have to be the same for a jump. Jump. Okay, now if we go out of programming mode, we should now loop through. Excellent. So we don't have an indicator down in our debugging output as to what instruction we're actually executing. Um, let's add that really quick. Let's move this over here. Let's move this up here. Uh, oops, we move this. Um, Okay, we have an indicator that this is a valid add instruction. And then we have our jump here. Um, jump. Uh, what does a jump do? Well, um, really the program counter uh, ends up being A here. Uh, kind of looks like that. Uh, we don't have any room. Um, there we go. So on a jump, this is what happens. Um, so we're adding and now we're jumping. So we're jumping to line one. So PC should become one and it does. Excellent. Okay. Uh, this is very good. Excellent. Okay, so um, is the issue of this being kind of just move this down a little, move this back up, move this up. Uh oh. Uh oh. Okay. Um, let's move the the clock over there. And I'm going to call this advanced. I'm going to give it a bit of space there. Okay. Hmm. Not sure what's going on here. Let's fix that. There we go. Okay. And we've got a jump. It tells us we're going to one. And we do. Awesome. Cool. So we have the ability to program a computer. We've got a program counter that we can um, execute jumps with. And we have um, two different instructions that we can execute. We can execute an add and we can execute a jump. So awesome. Yeah, I think this is really good progress. So thank you very much for watching. Um, if you have any feedback, please leave it in the comments down below. Have yourself a great day. Thank you very much.